<laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Hey mama. Pregnant dog over here. Where are you? There you are. Hey mama. How you doing mama? Yeah. Ah, good puppy. Good puppy. She might have had the babies. She doesn't appear to be pregnant anymore. Ah, who knows? That's all you see around here are dogs and puppies and pregnant dogs. And <laughs> they do tend to run a little wild. <clears throat> but anyway, today we're going to be talking about the, the good old Omicron variant of the virus. Uh, I'll let you know what's going on in the news, the number of cases. Uh, it's becoming a concern and a lot of people have questions and are raising theories and uh, rumors are starting to get spread about certain things. So I just want to clarify some of that and let you know exactly what I know. <clears throat> and uh, we'll all figure it out as we go along. And if you're over here already or if you're thinking about coming over here, yes, you still can. Uh, but this will probably affect you in some way. So I thought I'd give you the, uh, the information now so you can, as always, better prepare yourself. And also, I wanna say hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I appreciate you guys. And if you like my videos and you want to support the channel, as you know, I love my awesome, awesome supporters. And I'll be willing to send you exclusive videos every week. First look videos. Copy of my book, Living Cambodia, a guide for living in the kingdom of wonder. And all you have to do for all that is uh, donate at any of the places you see down below. I have a PayPal, I have a Ko-Fi.com, or you can join my Patreon for just starting at five bucks a month. And you'll receive all those things each and every week with some surprises thrown in along the way. Each donation is very much appreciated. I want our goal this month to be about $350. And together we can make that happen. So if you can and if you want to, all those links are down below. And I'll be sure to give stuff back to you as a way of saying thank you. Alright, let's get on with the video. So we got the old uh, Omicron here to talk about. We're going down this uh, narrow, narrow dirt path that passes for a road. Obviously, one of the roads that didn't get uh, <laughs> didn't get any work done during that year-long road work project that went on here. So that's all right. Yes, for the past uh, week, the number of new cases, new infections in Cambodia have. Once again, risen to triple digits. The highest recorded cases were yesterday with 262. And these are all related to that new variant, the Omicron. And so uh, people are talking about it, at least over here. And uh, some of the things they're saying aren't true. Some things we don't know. Ooh, very noisy little street here. Got a lot of music. And you'll hear that all over. These uh, people on motorbikes or with their little carts. And they'll have a speaker with what they're selling and how much. Kind of a carnival barker kind of thing. But anyway. So yeah, cases are rising. Uh, but as far as things being shut down or locked down again. That is not on the agenda. I want to put that room to rest. Uh, the Prime Minister has already said, no matter what happens, there's going to be no more lockdowns. There's going to be no more shutdowns. Uh, 
He said the combined New Year celebrations in mid-April are going to uh, be in full force for the first time in uh, two years. They're not going to ban the gathering of people. Uh, nothing like that. However, he is urging and encouraging people to either A, get vaccinated if they haven't already, and B, getting all their booster shots if they haven't already. If it's been more than four months since either your vaccination or your last booster shot, they're encouraging you to go back and get another one to protect you from this variant. And he's also asking for the provinces and different cities uh, to implement measures, safety measures, to educate people and do what they can to help stop the, help stop the spread. Uh, I know most of these cases um, are coming from uh, Phnom Penh, the capital. So uh, they've already implemented some measures the other day. As a matter of fact, they made an announcement that uh, it was more of a threat, more of a hard-handed approach, showing how extreme they could get if people weren't going to pay attention to the mask mandates and uh, not wanting to use hand sanitizer or follow any of the other measures that are in place. And they said they could go, they could go as far for those people who weren't listening. That they could, they would not be able to go to work because workplaces have those mandates in place. They're just not being enforced. And even as far as not allowing people who are not vaccinated to leave their homes until they are vaccinated. Yes, these are pretty extreme measures and uh, kind of hard-handed, heavy-handed. But let me be clear, that it was a warning. It wasn't a, it's not a law. There was nothing in writing, nothing, no bill being passed or anything. They were just saying, look, we're trying to keep everybody safe. We need people to get their booster shots. We need to stop the spread. And if not, we're just going to take more and more extreme measures along the way. What they have done is uh, started cracking down harder on the measures that are already in place by finding people who are not wearing masks in Phnom Penh, by making sure businesses are making customers show their vaccination cards or scanning the barcode on the outside of their business that will let them know that they've been vaccinated and making sure they don't allow people in that are not wearing masks but the mask can be removed you know while you're eating but other than that they must be kept on and they're also encouraging businesses not to have any more than seven people at a table and allow enough distance between tables so there's some kind of social distancing. Now this is all happening in Phnom Penh. <laughs> and uh, Siem Reap is so pretty, pretty relaxed in that regard. I don't know of very many businesses, I do know of a few, but I don't know of very many who are actually stopping people on the way in to see a vaccination card. I've never been asked for one, I've never, there's only one time I've been asked to scan the QR code on the outside of a business. So, uh, so people in Siem Reap, of course, are a little bit less inclined to, to worry about that. It's not, the rules here aren't really being enforced the way they are in Phnom Penh. Because as I said, most of the cases are coming from Phnom Penh. Siem Reap is seeing very little in the way of new cases, either of the initial COVID-19 or the variants. But as the numbers rise, and if you're on your way over here or you're already over here, uh, you should be prepared for some kind of uh, 
new new uh, regulations to be taking place. So all I'm saying is if you're vaccinated, be sure you have your card or you got your phone that you downloaded the QR scanner on. And be sure to wear a mask whenever you're outside. That should really go without saying at this point, <laughs> at this point in the pandemic. And also very important to keep in mind something a lot of people uh, don't seem to understand that there is no cure for COVID-19. <clears throat> a vaccine is not a cure. It's a preventative measure. It decreases your chances of receiving or spreading the disease. But there is no actual cure. And I said this before, and I think uh, we can all pretty much agree now, this is probably going to be an annual thing. And just like with the flu shot, you probably have to get a COVID shot every year. It doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. And that's why countries like Cambodia, because of their high number of initial vaccinations, uh, one website listed them as second in the number of vaccinated citizens behind Taiwan, I believe it was. And so it could have been much, much worse here, but thankfully it was not. But because of that, you know, countries like Cambodia are saying we're, we're, we're trying to effectively live with the virus instead of trying to fight against it or stopping people from moving around or stopping people from coming in and things like that. So I did hear people saying things on Facebook like, well, with these new cases, people better start stocking up now because uh, they're about to lock us all down and things like that. That's not, that's not the case. You never know what the country is going to do, what the government's going to do uh, in the future. But that's just uh, that's just some thinking that's getting ahead of itself and uh, has no basis in reality. As I said, the prime minister already said, nope, no more lockdowns, no more shutdowns. And even my new year, which isn't until April, is a is a definite go. Plans are already being made, preparations are in order, and all set. So yeah, you can expect some minor inconveniences. That's what I call them. Wearing a mask isn't a big deal. You know, showing a card isn't a big deal. Scanning a QR code isn't a deal. Isn't a big deal. So you can expect some minor inconveniences. Not as bad as some countries. I understand, but uh, still, I think overall Cambodia is much uh, more. Uh, progressive and open <clears throat> because they've taken the steps necessary to uh, ensure that as many people as possible are vaccinated and that's one thing you got to understand about this country uh, and Asian countries in general not just Cambodia that the, one of the main cultural differences uh, is that back in the West we're more individualistic we're concerned about ourselves. How will this affect me? Uh, what is this going to do to me? What will I do when this happens? Etc. Etc. Cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that's bad or good. I'm just saying that's just the way it is. <clears throat> but uh, most Asian countries, you'll notice, are more community oriented and uh, community minded. They're always asking the same questions, but for the community as a whole, how will this? It's not how will this affect me. It's like if I do this, how will this affect? My community, my group, the other people, you know, my country, and things like that. And again, I'm not saying that's better or worse, but I'm saying that's just, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll understand that uh, if you've never been here once you come over here. So the decisions they make are always going to be based around what they think is best for the good of the country as a whole oh. and the community and things like that well my battery just died on my gimbal 
So I guess that's a sign. I guess that's a sign that uh, I should end this one now. I just wanted to let you guys know and be aware of things that might happen. And of course, I'll keep you updated. And if you're a supporter, any big news that comes along the pike, I will send it to you guys first because you're awesome. Be sure to check out my links down below. Like I said, uh, if you want to get in on that and uh, get my weekly exclusive videos and all the information first before it goes on my public channel, donate through PayPal, Ko-Fi.com, or join my Patreon. Other channels blogging in this part of the world, they are listed down below in my description. Very good channels. Check them out. All my social media and other things. I also have another YouTube channel I just started. It only has one video. I'm not going to mention it here. I'm not going to put a link because it has nothing to do with Cambodia. It's a whole separate thing. But if you like horror, especially horror books, if you like horror books, you might be interested in my other channel. So uh, let me know in the comments or send me an email and I'll send you the link to that. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you have not. And as always, share if you want to. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.